I've been saying for a long time that the American mainstream media and specifically the media many like to call the liberal media, the progressive media, the mainstream media that somehow uh, I've been saying they were complicit in the election of Donald Trump. Why? Because of the way they covered it. They covered it. Look, let, let's be clear. It's not like the leaders of these media conglomerates don't know what they did. It's not that they don't know what happened. In fact, Moonves, Larry Moonves, the let's Lee Moonves, the uh, former uh, CEO of CBS, said it plainly. He said Donald Trump may not be good for the United States of America, but he's sure as hell good for CBS. What he really meant is by putting this caricature on. He got a whole lot of coverage. He got a whole lot of eyeballs. He got a whole lot of clicks on on the websites for CBS, etc. So again, the media was complicit in allowing Donald Trump to snow the Americans into electing him as president. And to put it bluntly, if we look at January 6th and all these other things that are happening, not only Fox News is complicit, but the mainstream media for giving Donald Trump plausibility, giving him the belief, giving, uh, giving many Americans the belief that it is okay for somebody of this deviant behavior, this mental ineptitude ineptitude that he that governs him that the, his 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 values or his criminality from before he was elected the first time somehow could be placed on a well if that's what the people want i mean if they covered it like this guy was a normal human being of course americans would give him a chance and with this guy using the grievances that many americans have against the system it opened the door to give him plausibility well uh, the media is doing the same thing again. The last news conference that he gave was a perfect example. Over an hour, they gave this guy to bloviate, lie, etc. No comeback. I mean, they simply screwed up and they allowed it to continue. Lawrence O'Donnell took about 15 minutes and destroyed the mainstream media, destroyed them in pointing out their dereliction of duty, in pointing out how S-T-U-P-I-D they are, and it was artfully done, perfectly done. Now, I kind of summarized it in a, a, you know, I cut it up a whole lot to the 50, to, for that 15, 16 minutes into a, a five minute or so segment that you need to listen to. So listen to this segment of Lawrence O'Donnell telling some truths I hope the media hears, but I don't really care if they hear it because that's why we are here. Independent media is here and you are here. Lawrence is going to ask a favor of you on what to do to the mainstream media as they continue to take us back. Check this out and then we'll take it on. It was 2016 all over again today. Donald Trump spoke at his home in Florida for over an hour, and all of the cable news networks, including this one, carried it live, just like they all did repeatedly in 2016. It would be hard to find a sentence in what Donald Trump said today that did not include at least one lie. Some of the networks tried to play catch up with fact checking after Donald Trump finished speaking, but that of course is way too late and utterly useless. No network even attempted to fact check every lie Donald Trump told. Every network has the capacity, especially with these wide screens we now have at home, to run a live scroll at the side of the screen, fact checking many. For example, when Donald Trump said, quote, Kamala Harris is not smart enough to do a news conference, the networks could have simply put on the side of the screen, Kamala Harris is a graduate of Howard University and University of California Hastings College of Law. Of course, Donald Trump proved once again today that he is not smart enough to do a news conference by saying something that was provably false in every response he gave to every single question. Most of those were knowing lies by Donald Trump. But many of the falsehoods Donald Trump spread today came from that vast well of stupidity that takes up most of his brain. The stupidest person who has ever won a nomination for president stood there in front of those reporters and said his opponent isn't smart enough to do what he was failing at right in front of those reporters. And to make a bad news coverage situation worse, none of the networks carried Kamala Harris's speech live after the Trump appearance. This network brought you the last few minutes of Kamala Harris's speech live. It's 2016 all over again. 
the same mistakes are being made. I have never seen an industry slower at learning from its own stupid mistakes than the American news business. And you cannot expect them in the next 89 days to figure out what they haven't been able to figure out in nine years, how to cover a Trump for president campaign. One of the Harris Walls campaign slogans now is we're not going back, but we just went back today. We went back nine years in the press coverage of the campaign. Donald Trump gets credit from the people he lied to today for lying to them. They appreciate it. Reporters understandably and incorrectly believe that the most important thing a candidate can do is answer their questions, but they don't know what an answer actually is. Words spoken after their question marks are not necessarily answers and are never answers when they come from Donald Trump. There are rumblings in the news media now about Kamala Harris as a presidential candidate not doing what Donald Trump did today stand up in front of reporters and take their questions. And some of the tinier minds in the news media continue to give credit to Donald Trump for standing up and lying in response to every single question they ask. A lie is not an answer. Donald Trump never answers reporters' questions, never. Anyone in the news media who tells you that Donald Trump has answered reporters' questions and Kamala Harris hasn't is lying to you you. And they're too stupid to know that they're lying to you. Donald Trump answered no questions today. None. He stood up there in a room where he made sure the reporter's questions could not be heard by the TV audience. And so when he spoke, the TV audience had no idea what the question was. Most of the questions were terrible. Questions about campaign strategy. What a waste of a moment with a convicted felon former president. Donald Trump did not answer questions today. And anyone who tells you that is not smart enough to know what an answer is. Anyone who then tells you that Kamala Harris has to answer questions from reporters because Donald Trump already answered questions from reporters is lying to themselves and to you, and you must not allow them to do it. Please crush them on social media when they do it because they will do it. Now, I hope Kamala Harris answers questions from reporters and from voters, but she has absolutely no greater obligation to do so because of what Donald Trump pretended to do today. The first time Kamala Harris does do a press conference as a presidential candidate, the reporters that were assembled today should all agree among themselves to apply the same rules that they decided to use today. No shouting, no follow-up questions, and no interrupting each other, and no interrupting the candidate, no screaming. Now, I wouldn't suggest those rules if the reporters hadn't just imposed them on themselves today in their participation in what Donald Trump turned into a charade. Lawrence O'Donnell nailed it. And the way he ends it, let the media give the same treatment that they've given to Donald Trump to uh, Kamala Harris, because if she were to get the same treatment that the media gave to him, the same respectability, the same silly questions, the same questions that amount to nothing, then she would be able to generate her own narrative without having to filter it through a corrupt media and then get to the American people directly. Again, let's be clear here, folks. The media's dereliction of duty in 2016 is re-emerging. It's raising that head again in 2024. But it's up to us. Here we have independent media right here and others to do it. One of the things I want to tell you, though, is please make sure that we, those of us in the independent media, are funded appropriately so that we can continue to do the right thing and expand the message, the real message, and not what the mainstream news media is trying to get out there. I tell you what, uh, Lawrence O'Donnell, he nailed it. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.